a very good morning and an early morning from here in Agra. We have woken up early to come to the Taj Mahal. Obviously when visiting India you have to come and visit the Taj Mahal and it's literally two kilometers from our accommodation so we're walking there now and the reason we've woken up so early is because the gates actually open about half an hour before sunrise and the ticketing booth opens about an hour before and as you can hear with all the hooters and the buses that are coming in everybody's coming in now they've got the same idea but oh beautiful cow poop. <laughs> there's poo <laughs> <laughs> gotta dodge some obstacles but the Taj Mahal is also a new seven wonder of the world it's a lot of lights a lot of shops busy opening up already now I think getting prepared for breakfast because once we're done at the Taj Mahal we're gonna go and try some of India's best breakfasts I'm reading here that you can actually book an online ticket at www.asi.nec.in but the entry fee is like a thousand three hundred per person. Hi, uh, two please. We're getting shoe covers now. Part of the ticket price. Yes, we do. Thank you. Water. Oh, and water. Yes, oh, thank, thank you. you. There are so many people that are guides out here that just beg you to be their guide. Decide, decide. So I guess we don't need it. Not much, I don't need, thank you so much, man. Why the building now that I'm in Taj Mahal? Do you have my revolving and everything? I don't need a guide, thank you, man. So there's actually quite a massive security checkpoint here. They did not allow us with any microphones or any tripods, but they do have a cloakroom here where I actually left my tripod. They gave me a number and put that number next to the tripod. They say it's for free, but I think once we're actually done with the Taj Mahal and we pick it up, they're probably going to charge us. Oh my goodness, that is so disorganized. Everyone's bags are just piled there and there's not enough people to actually check them but they're very strict of what you can bring inside. No food, no cigarettes, uh, no books. So yeah, just be careful what you do bring. So you've just entered the Taj Mahal. Yes, we really like the guide too. And this is, uh, no thank you. And this is what the entrance to the entrance looks like. That is the entrance there and the Taj Mahal is behind it. I just got a glimpse of the Taj Mahal. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. But we have entered on the Eastern Gate and I believe there are three gates that you can come in. Our gate was super busy so I can imagine that the other gates are as well. It's currently now 10 to 7. Uh, you can see lights inside the sky but the sun actually hasn't completely risen. This is a beautiful courtyard. I see everyone standing around taking photos already just of the entrance. You like pictures? Uh, no, thank you. Apparently there's an optical illusion once you enter and we'll show that to you just now here at the Taj Mahal. Wow, that is incredibly beautiful. Look at all the details. Even these little pillars that are like going up all the way around. I don't even know if you can call them pillars, but they almost look twisted and braided. It's really, really pretty. So the optical illusion is as you come in by the eastern gate and you see the Taj Mahal through the opening of the gate, it looks so big. But the minute you walk through the entrance, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller because the space around it opens up. And that's the optical illusion here at the Taj Mahal. How wow. incredibly beautiful is that? Sheesh. It looks gigantic. <laughs> wow. It looks like just a beautiful white castle just standing there and it's all perfectly symmetrical the left and the right hand side. Even the gardens are supposed to be symmetrical and it's stunning. It's actually so beautiful around here. They have these small little trees with this beautiful little fountain pointing straight at the Taj Mahal and you can see that it's perfectly white in color. There is one other optical illusion, but we have to get closer for me to point that out. There are thousands and thousands of people though. <laughs> we tried to come as early as we could, but by the time we arrived here, which we thought it was when it was going to open, there was really just so many people. But the Taj Mahal is not only beautiful to look at, it's actually got a very sentimental meaning to me as well yeah. my grandparents were here many many years ago I 1995 think was, yeah 1995 and i always said to them when planning this trip or well, not to them because my grand passed years ago but i always said to my grandfather that when i'm coming here i'm going to recreate some of the photos that he actually took and I actually wanted to show him that, but unfortunately he died a few days ago. 
Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. But it's special because I get to be here in the memory of him. So it's special to me as well. It's okay. I love you, Kay. I know you do. <laughs> The closer we get into the Taj Mahal, it's starting to seem bigger again. It's gone from big <laughs> to small to big again. So I've noticed how they cut the grass over here. Check those two guys, they've got a little machine. The one pulls and the other one pushes. So it has no motor and I think that's kind of to keep the silence in here because cars aren't even allowed 500 meters before the building. So I think that's why they have a lawnmower like that. That's interesting. Now that we're actually here, I can point out the second optical illusion. And if you actually look at the masts, when you look at these masts on the side, they appear to actually be straight. But when you're really looking at them, they are curved almost to the side. I can actually see that, that this you one's pointing that. out that way and this one is pointing out that way. And the reason they're curved is for two functions. First, to actually balance the look of the Taj Mahal and second, so that um, if they had to crumble away, let's say in an earthquake or something like that, they wouldn't crumble away on the Taj Mahal itself. Yeah, they'd actually fall out so that they wouldn't land on the Taj Mahal, which is so ingenious thinking for back in the day. Like, man, that's just impressive. I wouldn't have thought, I didn't even think like that today. <laughs> no, <laughs> and people were thinking like that so many years ago. It's crazy. Looking at the Taj Mahal now, the sun is starting to peep over the bushes and it's almost changing the color of the marble on the Taj Mahal. It almost looks golden-y now instead of just white. And I'm sure during different times of the day, the color on the Taj Mahal also reflects and it would maybe look pinkish at sunset. We've managed to get super close to the Taj Mahal and the size of this thing is just impressive. That gate over there, people are busy going towards the museum which you can enter. We are not however going into the museum because we cannot record inside there, but you can basically see two tubes. And there's interesting facts about these two tombs. The first one is that the Taj Mahal was built for one of the Mughal Emperor's wives. It was his third but favorite wife mm. who actually passed after giving birth to their 14th child. And he was really so upset about her passing that he just wanted to build this magnificent tomb for her. And that is why you get the Taj Mahal. And another fun fact is that this tomb was actually the first one built for a woman. Normally these tombs were built for men. So it was almost a status of power and endless love that he had for her. Yeah, when he died in like the early 1600s, he was actually buried right next to his wife. So both of their bodies are over here. Even though he's so close to the Taj Mahal, you turn around, even the entrance of this place is beautiful and it's perfectly symmetrical. Even the trees are like in a symmetrical line. As this place was built in the early 1600s, to think that after 400 years, it is still this pristine. I wish we could keep all our buildings like that. We're going to try and get closer and actually go up these stairs to get into, not into the Taj Mahal, but at least onto the first level of the Taj Mahal and say that we've touched the Taj Mahal. Do you think this goes on my head? No, that's definitely <laughs> not for your head. <laughs> that's for your shoes shoe covers. I think they give us the shoe covers to obviously make sure that the marble and all of that doesn't get dirty and they try and like keep it in as much pristine condition as possible and like we said earlier you're not even allowed to drive your car up close and that's because of the pollution and I do believe that they start every now and again scrubbing the Taj Mahal in order to keep it this white. Wow every angle of this building is beautiful. Look at my fancy shoes. So to get close towards this, it's actually part of our ticket. To get into the museum, you've got to pay extra. I think that's about 200 rupees extra for each person. We're going to get our first glimpse. And here we are. You can see the marble floor already. And look at the size of this thing. I mean, yeah, it's still marble. 400 year old marble. 
and all around us is just white. I still can't get over the size of this building. Like this is a tomb. You can actually see on the side here of the Taj Mahal, it looks like there is writing up there and it goes all the way around and down there and on the inside as well. But if anyone knows what that scripture says or the writing says, please let us know in the comments below. I'd love to know what it's saying. And although we did not get a guide, we overheard a guide and he said that from one end of the Taj Mahal to the other end is 55 meters. And it's built in a perfect square, so on the other side it's also 55 meters. And he was also saying that from the bottom to the top is 55 meters, but I actually read online that it's 73 meters tall. Oh, I think it's maybe because of the little pointy things on top. Maybe, I don't know. And so right next to the Taj Mahal is that river. There's the one mosque, the beautiful sunrise. And here's the Taj Mahal. We can basically walk wherever we want to walk, all around it. If you're going to the museum, you can go inside. But once you come here, it's actually quite spacious. There's not a lot of people. So we're getting our own little bit of freedom here because there's a bit of chaos down there. Yeah, you can see everyone's coming towards the river. But I don't know if you can actually see, like, the pillars are busy leaning outwards, so if I have to match it with the wall, you can see there, like I think the shape of it is actually also destroying it, but it's definitely leaning that way. And this one as well, I can feel that it's busy leaning that way. So that if it fell, it would fall out and not onto the Taj Mahal. Oh wow, there's even a huge fence. That's a nice backdrop. You can see the mist coming off of the water there. That's how early it is still. And for the first time ever in our lives, we get to come and touch the Taj Mahal. Are you ready, Danny? I am ready. One, One two, two, three. three. This is probably the only time we're gonna to touch the Taj Mahal. <laughs> it's a once in a lifetime opportunity and we can officially say that we were here. I know this is such a touristic thing to come and do when you come to India, but you can't not come here. Like, look at this. This is basically the only thing that people come here to Agra for because Agra doesn't offer a lot. It does have the Agra Fort, but we've already seen forts, so we're not going to go and explore another fort today. But we are going to go and try some food as we have not had a proper Indian breakfast yet. Just by the amount of shoe covers that are in that bin already, you can tell how many people have already been here. And it's still the morning. I wonder how many people actually visit the site today. Hi. So I'm picking up my tripod now. They said it's free, so let's see. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. I guess they kept the stuff for free, so <laughs> you have a place where your stuff can be safe at no extra charge. So we are currently releasing three minute videos on Facebook, which is just short videos. So if you do prefer shorter content videos, then please head towards our Facebook channel. It's called The Buddy Moon, and we'll leave that also in the description below. So I found this place on Google called Bamboo Cafe. It's got over 800 reviews on 4.7 out of five stars. So it should be a good place to have some breakfast. This way we won't get what they call the Delhi Belly, or here we call it the Agra Belly. Uh, rooftop, rooftop. Can you sit there? Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so it looks like they have three floors. Yeah, and we're wanting to go to the top. I'm sure we'll get a nice view. It also looks pretty from what I saw from the road. And this is our rooftop bamboo restaurant. <laughs> and we just have the road down below us. I mean, there's so many restaurants along this road and then the Taj Mahal's down there about a kilometer and a half away. Our table's kind of made out of wood. It almost looks like uh, pallets. Yeah, like wood pallets. Yeah, that have just been reconstructed. Into a table. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Um, do you have coffees? Coffees? Um, the cappuccinos? No, no, no. No, no cappuccinos. This is, this is a milk coffee, black coffee. Uh, okay. They have different types of lassi oh. over here. They literally have a plain lassie, sweet lassie, banana lassie, 
It's your banana chocolate lassie, mango lassie. Oh my god. And a fruit lassie. Yeah, forget coffee. I'm having a banana lassie. I think I'm just going to stick to the normal lassie. I really enjoyed that the last time I tasted it. And maybe it will taste very different here. Breakfast. What's the best breakfast? This uh, my, is a uh, homemade food. Every Everything good. Good. Everything good. <laughs> you, you. Right. But I, I want some. I want like an Indian breakfast. Indian breakfast. So what is good for Indian breakfast? This one Indian breakfast. This is a puri, puri, oh, potato yeah. bhaji, Indian sweet jalebi, yogurt and chai. And chai, hey? Chai, chai means ends tea. Milk tea. Ah, uh, okay, milk tea. That. So that was the owner, and actually, when speaking to him and asking him what we should order. He was just pointing out the most expensive <laughs> items on the menu and that's why he was making us choose those options but I think the Indian breakfast is probably a good choice seeing that we are in India I am going to trust him with that and we went for uh, the aloo partha because it's a potato partha and I mean everyone loves aloo here in India so why not? This is my banana lassi and this is my sweet lassi Cheers! Cheers! It tastes like a banana milkshake. Mm, mine tastes like a yogi sip. Really? Like yeah. a yogi sip? A yogi sip. Like do, I taste the... do they have yogi sip where you are from? South Africa, we have yogi sip. Let us know in the comments below. Mm. Mm. That tastes more like a milkshake than a lassi to me. Yeah. The banana one. Okay. It's good though. Thank you. So in front of me, we have a proper traditional Indian breakfast. So over here we have aloo bhaji, which is made from potatoes. Aloo is potatoes. Over here we have puri, which is like a bread that is baked in oil. And then we have jalebi, which we've tried before. It's a sweetness, um, like a dessert. And then this is... Uh, aloo paratha. Aloo paratha. So this looks like a bread that has been made out of potatoes. They've also given us some yogurt in order to try, in case maybe I think that is too spicy. But I think this, with that, and inside that, that mm, It's gonna almost taste like a dahi puri I don't know how no, I'm supposed to eat it just, Should I pour it inside Yeah, here? I say fill it up all inside <laughs> there Do it the Daniel style and just put it all inside there and eat it Back home we have a bunny chow Which is basically a quarter loaf of bread and they make curry and they put the curry inside the bread and then in South Africa we call that a bunny chow so this is actually kind of reminding me of a bunny chow so let's give us a try that is yummy this puri is very crunchy the alu bhaji is very spicy it's yummy but very very spicy so I definitely think for the next bite I'm gonna need to add a touch of yogurt mm, much better so yeah I've got the aloo paratha which is potato bread kind of almost tastes like a crepe but just with the potato flavor I think this with the aloo bhaji mm, wow <coughs> that is spicy wow there's not even a lot of flavors in that thing. It's just extremely spicy potato. Taste it with yogurt. The yogurt um, neutralizes the spices, so then you get the full flavor of the dish without it burning your tongue. That's probably why they have the yogurt. Mm. Oh, that is so much better. Now it's much nicer, right? Actually, enjoy this. Spiciness might get me later, but otherwise. <laughs> and a good lassie to cool down your tongue. Mm. <laughs> so there is not much else to see here in Agra other than the Taj Mahal. There are forts but we've done forts before so we're not going to explore the rest of Agra but rather head with the train towards another town. But we're going to be making our way all the way down to Kerala. Mm. So if you enjoyed this video be sure to stay tuned, like, subscribe, follow us on the rest of our Indian adventures mm. and if you enjoy the shorter content head over to Facebook. Yep. See you in the next video.